Welcome back to It's Your Law. I'm George Curtis, and Mary Lou Robinson is my guest. And Mary Lou, if you were to describe to somebody who is considering becoming a criminal defense attorney what the job really entails, how would you describe it? Well, I think uh, like some other facets of the practice of law, you have to care about people and be interested and concerned. I think that you uh, get a, a great deal of opportunity to analyze uh, factual problems, apply the law, challenge the law. You get to look at the Constitution regularly. Remember the Constitution, George? <laughs> you used to do great criminal work. You remember the dates of the Constitution? And that's what yeah. it was about. Right. Uh, that's exactly what it was about. All of the rules that said the government shall not uh, establish a religion, invade your house, uh, uh, force you to testify against yourself, uh, th things like that. And, uh, and it's, it's worth rereading. And in my kind of work, I guess I don't read it often enough, but there's a lot of gold in there. And uh, that gold is because of the history of our country at that particular time, the concerns of the people who wanted to start a new nation, and their worry was about the federal government. Their and freedom from, freedom exactly. from. Exactly, and you, you read that strangely written Second Amendment, for example, you know, it, uh, it talks about a militia because I think they didn't want a big standing army. They were afraid of a, a big, powerful government. They'd just broken away from one. But the second line in that particular uh, amendment, if I recall, says the people are entitled to bear arms. So it, it kind of was the people against the government, wasn't it? Well, well, the people at least identifying that the government was at, serving at their will, and they weren't going to be looking for the rules the government put upon them. The, 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 the government really, it's our government, it's just we've become so detached from it. But anyway, if there's anyone who wants to be a criminal defense lawyer, A, please consider it. B, I would do anything to help any criminal defense lawyer who wants to, to learn the trade, whether they are wet behind the ears at a law school or if they've practiced law for 20 years and they want to do it now. We have such a need for people who are enthusiastic. Maybe there are older lawyers, and I've thought about this, who have done great criminal work in other areas who don't need to be on the, uh, the high economic side of the law anymore, who would like to do a little bit of good work before they hang it up. And they should come on board because we need some good defense advocates out there for the citizens. We really need that. And of course, uh, I, I think this is a fair statement, but you're perfectly uh, willing, I'm sure, uh, to shoot me down if it isn't. One of the things that I think propels you in this area is your strong belief in the Constitution. You rarely hear anybody talking about the Constitution anymore. The only people that seem to use it are the criminal defense lawyers and the people who are interested in civil liberties. And actually, the quickest way to have somebody in the Fox Valley look at you suspiciously is to say, I believe Life. in civil liberties. I'm a member of the, the ACLU. ACLU. I knew where you were going. You're <laughs> absolutely right. <laughs> I, I happen to be a member, and uh, whenever I say that, Friends and enemies don't know what to say. I'm afraid to join. <laughs> but you know, George, we had a wonderful ACLU type lawyer. I mean, he wasn't, I don't know if you, but who really was in individual rights and responsibilities, mm. equal, equal protection type cases, did a lot of civil liberties work. We had him for 10 years and he was just wonderful. That was just a happy part of our office. And we lost him. He went back to Madison where life was a little better for him. His family lived. But there isn't one lawyer I know of in the Valley these days who really is interested in that area of the law. Well, I take two cases a year for free and I really should take 200, but I don't even have time for two. Uh, and um, I, I believe in it, and it causes me more trouble among <laughs> my friends and enemies. They wonder, you know, if I have a missing chromosome. Be really? Be because I don't think they understand that, first of all, I do get a client. There's always a real client. But what the ACLU stands for, in my opinion, is no matter who is the client, if there's a threat to 
the Constitution. If mm -hmm. somebody's trying to cripple or weaken or shrink the constitutional protection, it doesn't make any difference if the client is washed or unwashed, educated or uneducated, uh, Jewish, Muslim, uh, Caucasian, doesn't make any difference. It's the Constitution. Actually, ideally, the thrill is greatest when the client's totally despicable. <laughs> and you can still say, even the least of us. No. We, we don't have descriptive words in the Constitution. It's, it's all of us. <laughs> well, uh, yes, uh, I can remember one about a year ago, a nice young man uh, uh, went one of the walkways uh, across Highway 41, and he had a big sign, a, a big cloth sign, uh, for one of the very minor parties. I can't even remember what which party it was, doesn't make any difference, and so they arrested him. If oh, it, I was thinking, where's the party? You mean political party? A political party. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> and, of course, if it had been the Republican uh, Party, he certainly wouldn't have been arrested. Uh, a Democratic Party, probably not, too. But it was just, it seemed subversive because it wasn't one of the two big parties. Uh, oh, th my That gosh. was an easy one, but uh, <laughs> we've just got a couple of minutes left, and... Uh, you know, everybody thinks that criminal law is something that's going to happen to somebody else. All wrong. But all <laughs> wrong. Uh, give these folks a little bit of a primer as to what they should do when the police officer starts visiting their home or asking them questions because it can happen to any of us. Be very polite. Be honest about your name. Uh, if you're driving a vehicle, you have to also produce your license. If you don't have it, you're obligated to produce an address and so on and explain that you didn't bring it, whatever. Never tell a lie. Stop talking at that point. That is your constitutional right. And you may or may not wish to call an attorney, but if the officer offers to give you a ride to the jail, the first thing you say to the officer after you've told him about your name and your address or whatever he, you're obligated to tell him is that you want your bond set. Those are the first magic words because in today's new artful way of handling inmates, they like to keep them all at least for three days before they see a court. See, So it used to be everybody had a bond set right away. Well, now that's a new kind of an art form we have and your bonds are $100,000. My bond in one of my cases now is more money than the first 20 years I practiced, all the bonds added together. Now, 100000 150000 Ask for a bond. And when you get to that point, if you haven't broken the rules, I'd be happy to help you. <laughs> and actually, uh, you, you said it, but I want to help emphasize it. When I did criminal work, and I know you see the same thing, there are three rules. Shut up, shut up, and shut up. You have no duty to talk. You have the right to refuse to talk, and you should until you talk to your lawyer. This time has gone so quickly. What a delight. Let's not wait seven years. Thanks for being on the Thanks, show. Thanks, George. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. People like Mary Lou Robinson, people who are willing to fight for the Constitution, fight for the presumption of innocence, fight for the burden of proof being on the government beyond a reasonable doubt, fight for that obligation of convincing a jury of 12 unanimously before somebody is found guilty are so important to our democracy and they're so important to our Constitution. And the call that Mary Lou made to all of us is when you reach that stage in your profession where you no longer need the big income, don't quit, don't go south, don't go golfing, don't buy a boat. Get back to what brought you into the law practice. Start representing people who need help. People with less education, minorities, the people who are filling our prisons, and many of them wouldn't be there if they had a good lawyer when they needed one. That's my opinion. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to live up to it someday. I'm George Curtis.